Welcome back everybody, it's Untap Your Go, and today we're going to be playing a Premier Kaldheim draft. I already did the draft, unfortunately, so you don't get to see the cards as we pull them, but I will break down the deck before we play. We are playing a Sultai Snow Pile, and let me tell you guys, our, our pulls were like stupid good. So, we got past three dual lands in our colors, snow permanents, three snow basics in our colors. We have two copies of Sculptor of Winter to be able to untap our snow permanents. We have three Ice High Troll, which we could pay two snow to make it indestructible and give it plus two plus oh until end of turn we have three copies of frost peak yeti you can pay one into snow to make it unblockable we have one hailstorm valkyrie is a format of two two with flying and trample and you can pay two snow to give it plus two plus two until end of turn we're playing bird strider when it comes into play it taps a creature if you spent a snow mana to cast it it stays tapped for a turn and that those are all of our snow payoffs Getting into the rest of the deck, we have two copies of runes. We have one that gives flying and one that gives trample, which are both really good considering we have we have a few linworms. So this is perfect to give flying or trample to. We can also give flying to our ice hole, ice high troll and just close out the game. We're playing one copy of In Search to Greatness. This was actually passed to me. A lot of people don't like playing this in draft, and to be fair, it's not the best card in draft. But if you can if you can reveal a permanent card that is a greater convert amount of cost plus one to whatever you have in play already, you get to put it into play or you scry. So no matter what, you're getting value, and honestly, just having this in here to scry every turn in draft seems fine to me. Two copies of Broken Wings. This is 100% main deckable in this draft format. Artifact, Enchantment, or Flying. You get to choose one of the three. You're going to run into one of them every game. At least one. You're going to run into one. So you, to have this as a removal spell, three mana instant speed, perfect. So two copies of Not Vold. Recluse is a three mana 4-2 with Reach. Uh, it's our typical spider of the format. It's not a 3-5 like we usually know, but a 4-2 is going to kill a lot of things that are flying. Two copies of Dog Pursuit. We actually opened three copies, but we're not going to play all three because it is a little clunky. Although it will close out the game a lot of the time, it's going to give us some life back. It just does a ton. We have a copy of Draugr Recruiter to be able to buy back our creatures whenever we attack. We can boast and bring them back. And then we have a, cri a Crippling Fear. This is a four mana sorcery. Choose a creature type. Creatures that aren't of the chosen creature type get minus three, minus three until end of turn. So depending on what our board state is, depending on what our opponent's playing, this is going to kill a few creatures. And if it can be completely one-sided, that's even better. And then we're just playing a copy of Run Ashore to be able to bounce our opponent's permanents as well as tuck them into their library. And playing the two copies of Ravenous Linworm because it's one of the best six drops in this format. A six mana, six, six that gains you four life. And that is the deck. Notice we are playing 41 cards in the deck. We usually play, we usually play 41 cards in limited, um... It's not super relevant in this format particularly. I, I actually used to play 45 cards in uh, in, in um, Eldraine just because Mill was such a strong strategy. But playing 41 cards in Limited, it's not gonna it's not gonna mess up the curve too much. It's not gonna mess up the numbers too much. So just squeezes in one extra card, and that is the deck. We're gonna take this into the arena and see if we can go undefeated today. Opponent goes first. They choose whether they're on the play. We are gonna opponent's on the play, and we're gonna keep this hand. It's a little slow, but we have some reliable threats. No snow mana, unfortunately. Also, forewarning, I just want to apologize if my voice sounds like deep and crusty. I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I'm going to be a little... I'm going to sound a little crusty, guys. But for those of you who are still watching... Stay strong, crusty gang. Stay strong. Here comes Coma Faithful. So it's got lifelink when it dies, it mills three. Not super... Super backbreaking or anything. He gets to attack into our Ice Eye Troll, which is frustrating. We could play the Not Vold Recluse. He's not. He might not want to attack. I wonder what this Foretold card is. Could it be a Poison the Cup, or maybe a Mammoth? Oh, okay, Sarolf's Packmate. That's a good one. If you guys are playing green and you get past a few of these, one hundred percent worth. Yeah, we're gonna no blocks. Okay, so we have four mana. We can't really double spell here. I can play the Rune of Might, draw a card. We might be able to find another 2-drop. This will give it plus 1, plus 1, and then he can't just attack attack us down with this 5-5. Five five. I also can try to get the Ice High Troll down soon, so that way if we can draw into the second snow, we can start using that as a premium blocker. Dog's Pursuit, we can also get down. It's a little early. It's not going to do a ton right away. I think we do. I think we go with the Rune of Might, so we can at least chump this if we have to. Bergstrider is really good too. We might be able to eat this damage one more time. So these two curve into each other pretty nice. And our opponent with another Fortel. Fortel, Fortel. Opponent's not going to attack with the 5-5. Five five. Don't be a baby. You're such a baby. I would have attacked with everything. Just taking the loss. 
Yep, we're going to tap down Homeboy. Beat our opponent down for five. I imagine this is a pump spell. We're just going to no blocks. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. We did not find our land. Five mana though. So we're, in, we're back into another situation where we can't double spell. We don't have the two snow mana. If we did, I would play the ice side troll. But for now, we're just going to play the night vault recluse. We'll pass it up. So now we... Not bold. So now we have a decent amount of block, blocking power. Mm -hmm. Alright, so they have no combat tricks since they tapped out. But they are going to have one probably this turn. We found our extra land. It's tapped. Big, big suck. Alright. Well, we're going to play down the dogged pursuit. The pursuit. Gain some life back. I imagine one of these is a poison the cup. Or a battle mammoth. Could be also... could all, Battle or mammoth might. Could also be another Seraph's pack mate. Really hoping it's not a combat trick. Opponent makes us discard two cards. That really sucks. So we gotta discard the Frost Peak probably. The Run Ashore is gonna help. But I don't really know how much. Frost Peak can block through, but Ice High Troll will have better defense. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna have to discard like that. God bless you, pup. Oh, that's your pup. God, uh, uh, pup, I'm so sorry. I wasn't I swear I don't I don't know who that pup is. I have no idea. No, opponent's gonna all attack us. This is most likely the mammoth might. So we're probably big dead here. We block a lack of these. Show me the battle mammoth. All right, they didn't have it. Well, we lost everything. <laughs> we lost everything. Our opponent's down to one one card in foretell. Sure, we get that boost. Well, we have to try to kill the five five. Ah, fair enough. Both of our both of our creatures can take this game over if we can live, but it's not looking good. It's not looking great. Sure, you get your boost. We're down to four. Yeah, we're dead. Good game. I didn't realize that they tricked me into participating in the AA on Arena. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave. Hopefully, this Broken Wings will come in handy, and hopefully we draw into literally anything that costs one or two mana. Nah, why would we? We did find our Black Source, though. That's a good draw. I don't want to play this out for it to just die right away. Opponent's not doing anything. We're just going to pass. Opponent foretells another card. That's a good draw. Ah, uh, I didn't play the Black Source. Mm. Well, we're just going to keep passing. Yeah, I really wish I played that Black Source. We could have drew out a kill spell this turn. And I'm okay with losing this over the Ice Eye Troll. Alright, let's try this again. So we have the three mana now. So we'll go ahead and play the Ice High Troll. Yep. You're... Right, so we made it hard for our opponent to deal with our creatures effectively, which works out. I think the best play is holding up the Broken Wings on their turn, deal with the Battlefield Raptor or an enchantment if they play one that's relevant, and then we can also hold up the Snow Mana for the Ice High Troll. Yeah, that seems fine. Sure. So do we kill that? Is that a bigger problem? Like, is that a bigger threat than this Battlefield Raptor? Yeah, you know what? We're just going to kill the Battlefield Raptor now. No, it's going to let it go. Opponent definitely had some form of a response. Oh, Squirt a Figgy? Effigy? Effigy? <laughs> this guy... So now, same deal, we can play a creature and hold up the snow mana. So we would have to play it out like this. So this draft format's a lot slower, I think, than 
most. It kind of does rely on the creatures, as does most limited formats. But it's all, just like all the creatures at all the different rarities just do so much now. Putting a counter on something isn't terrible. This getting flying is absurd. This being able to tap creatures on attack steps, fine. Story Seekers. That's a magic card. This guy's going to be a pain in the ass. So he can tap down our Ice High Troll now. It's not going to give his creature double strike. That's fair. Alright, so we're dead in a turn for two. That's a great draw for us. When he plays another card, he gets the counter. Like, if it's going to have flying, it'll be a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, we'll still play the not Volder Recluse. Any day, opponent. Thank you. We're going to pass. So they have three cards. Odds are they're going to be able to trigger the Infernal Pet this turn. And if they're smart, they'll hold up the third card and then they can trigger it a second time. Next turn. Okay. Opponent taps down the 4 2. Sure. Alright, so opponent does the combat trick first, so we can't block this, but what we will do is obviously block here and kill that thing. No more tapping for our opponent. Berg Strider is really good. That could help us keep alive. I mean, this Infernal Pet's going to kill us soon. Very easily. play Bergstrider, tap it down, but then we lose the snow mana. How relevant is the snow mana at this point? Yeah, let's attack like that. See what our opponent wants to do. Okay, free damage is free. We'll always take that. Yeah, we're going to Bergstrider. Keep their infernal pet down. Burja. Well, hopefully we can find our other copy of Broken Wings, because this guy's going to find him so much resource. Oh, God. And it begins. <laughs> We're very close to lethal. Our opponent gets to play the, the, infernal, the infernal pet might end up getting flying again. Hopefully they draw into a land on their next turn so they can't double spell and get all this all this value. I think at this point we just play our Ravenous Linworm. Gain the life. I could get in with the Berg Strider. Yeah, that's fine. The opponent could have killed it, and if it did, we would have like Draugr recruited. Got it back. Haha, -ha, they drew the land. Now, if our opponent plays this guy, they're going to be top decking, so they're not going to get the double spell trigger very commonly. So they could hold this up, wait until their next turn, to hopefully find another non-land card. Where they might play, which is better for us. Yeah, let's see. Now they're going to hold it. It's pretty smart. It's a good draw for us. I think we go to combat first, see how he decides to block, maybe. 6, 10, 14, 17, 19. All right, so we're attacking with lethal. So he will have to block. Of course, he gets four back, so he'd be out of lethal range regardless. Hello. Hopefully we can get his infernal, infernal pet to take three damage at least. Yes. Go on now. Yep. Even better. So we actually get to activate the Ice High Troll 2 if we want. We have four seven mana, so we can only activate this once or play a Yeti. So I feel like playing the Yeti is probably the better bet. Uh, well, we do want a Crippling Fear. So we're going to we're gonna Ice High Troll, get this damage in. Okay. Now, if we choose... We're going to choose Troll, right? So it's not going to affect any of these. Let's name Troll. Wipe is bored for the most part. Granted, Burja is going to find him resource. Ah, get screwed. Two lands in a row for our opponent. Arena is helping. 
for once the shuffler is on our side and now we force our opponent into a bad situation where blocking is it's just not good for them they're going to lose their creatures and we should be able to close out this game in a turn or two sure <clears throat> But we're going to kill the Furja so you can't find any more resources. 100%. Uh, we're not going to use the snow mana. Put them down to one. And now they have an unblockable creature they have to worry about. Three lands back to back. Feels bad. Good game opponent. Third match against Sea and Storm. And this opening hand is super good. So we're going to keep it. Double snow permanence means our ice high troll is turned on sooner than later. And the sculptor. Oh. Oh. Oh, the feel bad. All right. Well, we're definitely getting this bad boy down. Sculptor of winter, everybody, is OP is... Oh. If you can get a couple snow lands, having this mana acceleration and glittering frost on top of it. Ugh. It's, it's juicy, guys. It's 100% juicy. We're going to play the Ice High Troll now. I don't think our opponent's going to have interaction for it right away. And actually, we played the last game a lot more cautiously. I, th I thought our opponent could have foretold a Poison the Cup or something that would have killed us. Let's all attack here and see what he does. Really? Really? So you're giving me the chance for damage? Eh. Still going to take the Dog Pursuit route. Don't underestimate this card, guys. It's very slow, but it will it will get you there. That sucks. Good for our opponent, 100%. Yeah, might as well. Tap down their giant... Their giant box. Opponent's getting mana screwed. Which feels really bad. Sure. That the raptor's good. Another dog pursuit. Gross. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do that. Sure. Predator's on a three turn clock. Might as well play this too. Could have got the extra damage in. Good game. But it's given up. It seems. Really, I mean, it's hard It's hard for them to beat this, right? I mean, they could have that in three mana spell that destroys an artifact or enchantment, gains them three, or three life or four life. No, they gave up. See, Dog Pursuit it just puts so much pressure on your opponent's life total so early on. We get to go first again, and our opening hand is a little awkward, but I do like the Dog Pursuit, the Not Field Recluse, and the Rune of Flight. Like, all of this is good. And we have a board wipe on the top end if we need it. Definitely not debated. Liliana sleeves for our opponent. This is some of the best art I think I've ever seen. From the creators of Final Fantasy and other various Square Enix artists collaborated with Wizards to make those sleeves and those alternate arts. And they came out it came out really pretty. Like a majority of them came out great. That's it. That's fine. How come this one doesn't give plus one, but the other one does? Why does the trample one hook you up? But the other, that's booty. All right, we're going to play the Woodland Chasm first. Go ahead and give this spider flying. Nothing scarier than a spider with flying. See, I stuttered just saying it because I was shaking in my boots. I love spiders. I'm very fascinated by them. Uh, like, I love the science behind them. Their, their position in the ecosystem and their role in the food chain. Uh, just... You know, I'll 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 be near one. Just like I don't like them in my domain. Like if if they're there and I don't know about it, then I'm terrified of them. If I just stumble upon a spider, I might get shook for a sec, and then I'm just checking them out most of the time. Whole tangent about spiders. What is this, what does this show become? Untap your biology. Could honestly just name spider and just wipe his entire board except the recluse. See what he does. Sure. Well, we're just going to name Spider just to be safe. Bye-bye. 
Ah, that would have been a great hit. Eh, Frost Peak Eddie's not bad either. That's going to help. We can play the Eddie first. Start attacking with it next turn. I mean, honestly, for him to pump, we're, we're like on even playing field right now. Now we're not. Now we definitely are not. We get to attack and be unblocked, but then he'll just beat us down for six on the backswing. Nine on the backswing. Great draw. You love to see it. So do we play the dog pursuit too? Leave our our defenses open. Last card in hand, do you think it's a removal? Nah, I don't think so. No attacks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no blocks. Yep. Down to seven. And they got the Fortella card, and it's probably a tapped kill spell. Valkyrie is so, 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 so good. We're going to go to combat. Let's attack for three and see what everyone wants to do. All right, so it's not, it's not an iron verdict. Well, we're going to play our Hailstorm Valkyrie. And now we have this as a blocker, and this as a blocker with all four Snowlands to activate. We'll have lethal next turn if our opponent all attacks here. Hopefully they don't have any form of exile or a pacify effect. Like, Bound in Gold would be really good here. Sure. So we block here. We block here. Wow. Opponent got it. Uh, shouldn't have attacked with the Frost Peak Yeti. Man, that feels bad. We should not have lost that game. Damn. And our opening hand is really good. Like, our opening hands have been great. Our gameplay has been pretty good. We've gotten very unfortunate defeats. I don't know. The last draft I played in this, I lost the first two games back to back. And then I won all seven of the games in a row. It's pretty impressive. I have I have uh, witnesses. I know it's very unbelievable, given that most of you are very much aware that I'm not the best player. But it happened. Maybe we could get lucky and it can happen again. Harold, please whiff. Dang. Dang. Conan got some good good juicy juice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We missed our land drop, so. We could play the recluse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, putting a counter on Harold's not too scary. Put it on himself, then we couldn't attack with the sculptor on the back swing. Uh is he gonna put that on Harold as well? Sure is. Not a land. Alright, let's give our dude flying. See if we can find one off the top. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm. Yeah. We're not going to be blocking with the Night, night Vault Recluse, so we might as well attack with it. Could have also played the Rune of Might. Yikes. It's pretty good. Yep, opponent just gets in with the 5-5. This is looking like a loss, huh? 
Found another land. Let's play the rune. Rune to another land. So we could hold up the broken wings. If there's anything relevant, we can also... Uh, yeah, might as well commit to the board, right? Let's play the ice hold, ice troll boy. He's just going to block the spiders, so there's no point in attacking. If you put in all attacks here, he's got the battle mammoth, 100%. Uh, we're going to block like this. I meant to do that reverse, but it's okay. It's not okay, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a card. Raise the Draugr, huh? Damn it. That's such a good card. Mm -hmm. It's not looking good for us. So if we actually play it like this, then we can get the In Search of Greatness activation next turn. Yep, we're dead. Good game, terrible draft. Welcome back to the wrap-up. If you made it this far, you witnessed the defeat of Untap Your Go. I did horrible this time around, guys. Horrible. So the deck itself was really solid. We just kept getting paired against some some other really good decks. But uh, went 2-3. and three. Pretty mediocre. We're going to open up these packs, though, for you guys on camera. And hopefully we get something cool out of it. Uh, Toralf is not bad. I honestly hate the equipment. I think its hammer is by far the worst legendary artifact in this cycle. I I could be wrong. Prove me wrong. But I think this card is terrible. The, the front half is okay. And even then it's still pretty meh. It's probably the weakest of the gods is what I'm trying to say. Hey, Mythic Wild card. Would you look at that? We also have a draft token and we have some more gems, so we're going to play in another draft today most likely. Stay tuned for that and leave a like on today's video if you guys enjoyed it. I know the gameplay wasn't the best and it's not a deck tech, but just if you liked it, please leave a like. If you're a new viewer and you haven't subscribed already and you've watched this far, just hit the subscribe button. I mean, you watch this far, you like the content, so just check out the, check out the rest of the content. I have a ton um, and I, I appreciate all your support, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob, aka Untapper Go, and I will see you guys all in the next video.